2019, a report by the U.S. Census Bureau revealed that the crime rate was at 10.5% and approximately 34 million Americans were living in poverty. Now, after hearing this, many of you may be wondering how or why so many people ended up living like this. Well, in short, the answer is economic inequality. Economic inequality is the disparity in wealth between different groups in society. Further research shows that economic inequality also affects Americans in areas such as employment, education, crime rates, and the judicial system, all throughout the 21st century. My name is Sebastian Mejia. I'm I'm Lucas I'm Miguel Araujo. In America, education is a big factor that, that affects the income that one will receive throughout your life. And because of that, economic inequality is directly affected by conflicts on how different races receive an education. The following chart shows the levels of education of white and black parents, demonstrating how big the difference between the two an education received is the African Americans receive less education. The next chart displays the income of families of different races and their levels of education. As seen here, most <coughs> African Americans and Hispanics receive less than high school education. And this shows that the level of education that they got affects directly the income that they receive on their life. As Miguel said, the, attention, the education you receive as a child and teenager are crucial to the rest of your life. Though the sad reality is that not all students receive the same education and opportunities due to differences in social economic status. In this graph, depicting a post-secondary enrollment status in 2016 by math quintile and parent social economic status for the high school class of 2013, you can see that of students in the highest two math quintiles, 63% are enrolled, are currently enrolled or attained a credential for the lowest two of the socioeconomic quintiles in comparison to 85%. This data was this data was reported directly by College Board and in 2019, and two years earlier. College Board implicitly addressed how students' socioeconomic status have a disproportionate impact on scores, which further confirms that a student's ability to afford test preparation services in terms of both cost and time links socioeconomic status and performance. In, in this next graph, in this next graph, you can see a clear difference when it comes to dropout rates from lower socioeconomic status in comparison to the higher. Though there are a multitude of factors that affect a student's decision to drop out of school, there's no doubt that there are more pressures and stereotypes placed on those from lower income households in comparison to the higher that affect those decisions. Both of these charts show students who are thriving in schools yet obviously decide to drop out, whether, for, whether from high school or from higher education. So a different way people uh, experience economic inequality is through payment, their payments and work. So in this table by the U.S. Census, as you, you can see the income for white people in America. It's, it has been increasing in the past few years, and it's a pretty high number. However, when you compare to the other, for black Americans in the, in the United States, you can see that the number still has been recent increasing the few past years. However, the numbers are much smaller compared to the other, to white Americans. This happens because uh, simply discrimination between both races and other races as seen by the US government census, which also occur by having them uh, lower income. And the second reason that happens, as Miguel said, different races and uh, ethnicities have worse, uh, worse education compared to white Americans. With worse education, it, it could also happen that you're gonna have worse uh, 
jobs, making you receive worse payments and having increased economic inequality. Economic inequality isn't just presented in race. Gender also steps into play. While the pay gap persists between races and ethnic groups, it widens even further when comparing the earnings of a white male compared to a woman of color. A great share of women have entered the workforce over the last generation, while the participation from the male point of view has decreased. Somehow, the label of participation of women trails that of men's. In this graph, it is visible that Although a woman may be on the same level of profession as a man, the income she receives should be expected to be shortened simply based on the fact that she is a woman. The typical Oregon woman over the age of 25 earns less than her male encounter with the same level of education attained. Now looking at different races of women and the pay inside of Oregon, it is inevitable to notice the decrease of wages according to the region they derive from. It is statistically proven that for every dollar earned by a white Oregon male, a woman earns, an Asian woman earns 0 0.75 cents, as well as African American women, Asian women earn 0 0.62, and Latina women earn no more than just 0 0.51 cents. Education is not a factor in this pattern, and neither is experience. This shows proof of how economic inequality continues to present itself inside workforce norms behavior. The table here shows the correlation between poverty and violent crime rates in 30 cities in 2019. According to the author of the table, for the independent variable of poor or poverty to have a significant effect on the violent crime rates, the significant value of violent crime rates has to be less than 5%. As you can see here, the significant value is 0.25% or 2.5%. This means that uh, this means that there is less than a 5% chance that the statistical information from this table is uh, incorrect. Knowing this, we can conclude that poverty has a direct relationship with violent crime rates in cities. And since poverty is the primary result of economic inequality, we can also conclude that economic inequality has, n has a negative effect on Americans by contributing to an increase in violent crime rates. Additionally, economic inequality also exists in the judicial system. The table here show the table here shows the amount of labor each the amount of labor time each person from different incomes are required to work to pay off the same traffic violation. As you can see, workers from the moderate to minimum income have to work more than 10 hours just to pay off a $286 stop sign violation, with minimum wage being the worst at over a day long days long uh, time. The judicial system is thought to be equal and just. However, the evident disparity created by economic inequality has caused it to take more from, uh, from those struggling to make ends meet. Fortunately, there are solutions to combat inequality in the present day. Joseph Hugh, the author of How Are Violent Crimes Raised in the U.S. Cities Affected by Poverty, talks about fighting poverty through funded welfare or poverty reducing projects. An example of this would be progressive taxing. Progressive taxes are taxes that increase as the taxable amount of money increases. Progressive taxes would take income from those high level incomes. This allows for cuts in progressive taxes and an increase in welfare benefits, which help groups increase of the poor. This benefits the poor communities, which in turn benefits areas such as education and employment, as well as reducing crime rates. However, it is thought that progressive taxes would make work less desirable because higher taxes make people work longer. Therefore, people work and spend more time relaxing. This is known as the substitution effect. allows for money to be relocated to those who need it. A poverty, a poverty reducing project such as this would also help lessen the negative effects that economic inequality has on different groups of people regarding 
their education system, employment rates, crime rates, and judicial sanctions. Unfortunately, this solution also contains its own problems. The benefits, the benefits which were designed to promote economic growth also create a distinctive, a dissentive to find higher paying jobs. This is because having a higher income job would cause the benefits to no longer apply to the individuals who once relied upon these. This occurrence is better known as the poverty trap. So this limitation threatens the well-framed poverty reducing projects. The presented benefits largely outweigh the de deficits. Uh, economic inequality has millions of Americans in the 21st century, and the importance of understanding the solutions for which improve the previously mentioned areas of society. So ask yourselves, what can you do to better the lives of someone in poverty? Thank you. You guys just slide together. All right, Val, we'll start with you. Blair, reflecting on the work of your group mates, uh, which one had the greatest, gave you the greatest overall understanding of the project or the topic you picked? Um, while, I, while we were doing the work, looking at Sebastian's um, research and his findings really helps me further understand that how economic inequality truly impacts multiple areas of life, not just like education and work. All right. Um, Sebastian, um, what's an example of an argument that was in one of your peers' work that you didn't use in the presentation, then why didn't you use it? Well, uh, my peers, I believe that we actually ended up using mostly anything. We did have some times where we found arguments, but that didn't even like the source itself wasn't really related to the topic so we didn't even include those to begin with but anything that was related to the topic we used all right anita um what's a way in which your teams the solution you came up with as a team make you think differently about the research you did Can you repeat the question? sure so thinking about the solution you guys came up with as a group how does that make you? How does that make you think now that you're done? How does that make you think about the research that you specifically did? Um, I think it it creates a bit of more sense of equality. Like mostly, I talked about the difference between men and women and their income, and including in one of our solutions, I feel like we be, we made a progress more like. Equal. Okay. All right. Um, where are we on to, Lucas? Um, if you had a sixth member in your group, what would be a topic that they could bring up that would add to your presentation? Um, if we had a sixth member in our group, we were probably talking about healthcare and disabilities, how those disabilities of different people and their healthcare. Uh, makes them have lower payments and different eco equality in the economic system. Okay, and Miguel, uh, describe an argument from one of your peers that they made in their research that uh, you think s most steered the solution you came up with as a group. I think Anita's graph, the, the first graph that she showed, really displays the difference between the woman and the man, and it also leads to the solution for the problem.